Hallelujah. Let us just come before Him and just give Him thanks and praise. Father God, we thank You that, Father, as we gather here, Lord, we will sing of Your mercies, Your goodness, sing of Your love for us, Father. We want to lift it up in the name of Jesus. Pray in us, all this in Your name. Amen.
brothers and sisters in Christ, let's come together, prepare our hearts to listen to the teaching from the Bible. Let's pray. Father in heaven, at this moment, we pray for your guidance. By the help of the Holy Spirit, those who speak and who listen, together we will understand the teachings from the Bible. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let's uh, come together to worship God. And before we start to sharing about the sermon, allow me to read the Bible, today's Gospel, from Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 to 9, and then 18 to 23. Matthew chapter 13, verses 1 to 9, 18 to 23. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly 
because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came out, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other, other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, and thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Verse 18. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refer to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, and thirty times what was sown. This is the gospel of Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I personally, personally I like travelling. Before travelling, that I will do the uh, necessary arranging uh, to plan, to do the research, uh, to make sure the place I go, is uh, everything is in order. So normally, I couldn't, I, I, by planning, I couldn't cover every single place in the particular area uh, to, to cover everything. I, I'm not able to do that. And that's because of that, I need to uh, write out my plan and I need to identify what is my aim and purpose for this trip. If I go for this trip is for to eat, or I go there to see the scenery, or I go there to learn the history of that area, or to see the culture, or to go and shopping and buy things. So I am unable to plan to cover everything in a short period of time. Therefore, I need to have a very uh, focus and aims that I need to be achieved during this trip. I knew I couldn't lose focus. Then, if I getting greedy, try I want to cover everything, but end up I couldn't uh, actually achieve my aim. And every single point of visit, uh, the place of visit, I just go and back, and it's a waste wasting of time. So if I plan my 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 focus is go to eat, then I will focus on it. If I go to see the beautiful scenery, I will only focus and put my resource in the, this uh, scenery. And if I go there to shopping, then I'll focus on shopping. But I clearly know I couldn't do everything at once. I need to have focus on my purpose of this trip. What is my aim? So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in our life following Jesus is similar like that. And if you look into the life of Jesus when he comes to the world, he is also very focused on what he tried to do. If we try to cover everything, then we will notice we lost the focus. And it's end up that so many things that is so rushing that are uh, getting tired and in the end we look like we do a lot of things but ended up we are wasting of time. So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today the gospel reading from Matthew chapter 13 verses 1 to 9 and then 18 to 23 is about the parable uh, of sowing the seed. Which this parable is uh, very popular. Many times we hear the sermon and we learn about it. 
And in this parable, Jesus is talking about four. There is a, a farmer go and sow the seed. And this seed uh, will drop in four types of soil. And the first one is the, the seeds uh, fall into the, along the path. Uh, some fell along the path. And it is along the path, the birds will come and add it up. Which Jesus explained is mean the seed is the message of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. And this seed of kingdom of heaven does not understand by those who listen, and the evil will come and snatch it. This is the first one. And the second one is talking about this seed fell into the rocky place, and this rocky place not much of soil, and the, the plant can grow very quick, but without strong root, with no root, when it grows up, the sun is too hot and scorched, and it will wither very fast. And from this, we know that Jesus tried to explain the people receive the message from the kingdom of heaven, then they grow very, very fast. In short time, they are very joyful, they grow very fast, but because no root. When persecution, troubles come because of the gospel, then they will fall away. And the third one is this seed fell among the thorn. And this seed will grow up eventually, but is choked by the thorn. Jesus explained uh, the, the seed of kingdom of heaven, that certain people, they will grow up, but they, will, they are choked by the worries of life and the deceitfulness of wealth, money. And making these trees, it, although it grew up, but it's unfruitful. And the last one is talking about the good soil, where the seed fall into the good soil, and it will grow 100 times, 60 times, and 30 times. Jesus meant there are seed also will fall into the good soil, and until the end, the words, they receive the words of kingdom of heaven, they understand it, and they produce the crops 100 times, 60 times, and 30 times. And normally, we will try to explain, okay, what, which soil are we? Are we a good soil, or we, we are the path, or we are the rocky soil, or we are the soil with thorns and, and the grasses there? But apparently, you see, the, the seed that is sow, they don't have uh, the, the right to choose. They, they cannot choose by themselves. And the soil is there, is there. Therefore, that make me think twice, is that really Jesus tried to try ask us to choose which soil are you? But from this, I put on my Bible readers, read from chapter 13 and 25. Then when I prepare the sermon, I listen from chapter 13 to 25. Then I realize something very special. I realize that when Jesus is talking about this parable of sowing the seed, he's not talking about whether can, are we choosing the soil, uh, which soil you want to be. But it's more look like Jesus is telling the disciples he wants to reveal the secrets of the kingdom of heaven to the creation. He wants to reveal the secrets to the people. But because these secrets is very difficult and hard to accept, that's why there are when, when the seed sow, when the news is giving up, there are different responses from the people. And this is just normal. Jesus said this is just normal because people will accept, they don't understand, and they will reject by the kingdom of heaven is about this seed. And this parable is not, Jesus not trying to make things uh, difficult and confused. In fact, parables is, is just like our peribasa or, or something that is very special saying in the, the context that when we say this, everyone will know what is it. So when we look at it, Jesus using the parable to make things easier to understand. And Jesus tried to say, there are many reasons that cause the seed cannot produce good crops. Some of them don't understand. Some because face troubles and persecution. Some because wealth and worries. Even though Jesus wants the disciples to understand in all these circumstances, Jesus wants the disciples to understand the word about the kingdom of heaven. 
And the interesting part, in this verse, chapter 13, Matthew chapter 13, verse 11 said, sorry, verse 12 said, whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This verse is echoing and respond uh, to Matthew chapter 25, verses 29 to 30. After 12 chapters after that, Jesus again mentioned in Matthew chapter 25. He said, For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servants outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This verse that Jesus repeated in verse 13, chapter 13 and chapter 25, Jesus knew it is not easy to understand and let the word about the kingdom of heaven to multiply when it first came. As this is what Jesus told in the parable of the sowing the seed. It's not the things that we can choose, what, whether we want, which, uh, which soil, we, soil we want to go. And who are we? We cannot choose. Sometimes worries come. We, we face worries. Sometimes troubles make us fear. We don't understand certain teachings. That, that is a very normal thing. That is happening. And sometimes we are tempted by the, the, the needs and the money and the wealth in the world. But we, we, we must know that the Christians sometimes also like that. We like to hear the sermon of blessing. If you believe in Christ, you will be blessed. If you believe in Christ, then you will get healed. And, and sometimes this is very attractive, uh, attractive teachings and, and, and hope. But is this what God and Jesus wants? There are so many things in human life that make us lose our focus about the kingdom of heaven. We have so many things that have distracted us that rather than looking in the real purpose of the kingdom of heaven, this seed, that we are distracted by many other things in our life. So my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in verse 15 to 16, chapter 13, verse 15 to 16. Jesus said, For these people's hearts has become callous. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are you, Blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. Jesus tried to say, we, we, we have so many things that have stopped us from focusing on the words. But those if listen, they focus, they, although so many things have troubles, but they, they continue to come back to focus until the end. Otherwise, they will see and they will hear, and they will be blessed and they were healed. In chapter 13, it's ended up with a story that Jesus' hometown, the people rejected the teaching of Jesus because the people having a proud, they say, doesn't this man is the son of the carpenter? We know their brothers, we know their, his, uh, his sisters. And we know him since young. I, uh, we saw Jesus when he is still the children because of the, the people concept and the proudness, they refuse to accept the words. And my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this parable of sowing the seed, in fact, giving us a true picture of, of the reality, that people will reject. They will not accept the words and the seed easily. But who knows once, when the seed go into the good soil, it will multiply 100 times, 60 times, and 30 times. If we continue to read the Bible, we, you can notice after Jesus saying, telling this parable, then the, the teaching finished, then the story continued. 
We can notice people come and follow Jesus because they want to get something. They are interested to get healed. They are interested to see Jesus casting demons. They are interested to see the miracles that are done by Jesus. But not many actually come to wanted to know more about the kingdom of heaven. They are expecting some things that is for their own benefits, but not about the kingdom of heaven. Even when Jesus revealed to Peter, and Peter confessed that Jesus is Christ, but immediately after a few as a, a, a few paragraphs, then uh, the, the Peter again don't understand the purpose of Jesus. And Jesus told him, Satan, get behind me. And what can we learn today from the scriptures, from the parable of sowing the seed? I think it's pretty simple. By comparing with chapter 25, when Jesus say, those who sow the seed, eh, those who uh, have, they have more. Those who don't have, the one they have it will be taken away. What Jesus tried to say is Jesus wants us to focus on the gospel of kingdom of heaven. Although there are many reasons that stop us from grow and multiply sometimes. But some is self-problem, some if the problems and troubles caused by others. But we need to focus in any circumstances, we need to focus on the gospel, proclaiming the kingdom of heaven. Yes, Jesus did heal. He healed people. Jesus, he go and cast demons, yes. Jesus, he performed miracles. But this will never is his uh, main aim. In fact, Jesus do all these things in order because his mercy and his kindness. He wants to help the people to identify and know him. Today, we are praying to Jesus. We are praying to God. But do we know what is the aim of Jesus? In fact, the aim of Jesus is to walk in the world he are going to sacrifice himself, die on the cross, and third day resurrected again. He, Jesus repeated this teaching, but no one here, and they would just want to see miracles and get healed. And this Jesus, he, when he's telling all these things, he's talking about he would just want the creation and the creator to be reconciled. If we don't have focus on the kingdom of heaven, and we just focus on all the things we want, Today, when we pray for healing, if no healing is not happening, are we losing our faith? Today, if we pray for a good life and good money, if not happen, are we proving Jesus no power? Today, we pray for the world to free from disaster and violence, but it seems not happening. Disasters still happen. Violence getting worse daily. Shall we lose our hope? No, with the mercy of Christ, we must continue our hope. Although things is not as what we expected, but when we focus on the kingdom of heaven, and the seed will grow 100 times, 60 times, and 30 times. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let's be focused. We must know our goal, then only we can do the right things. When we do what Jesus expected, more will be given. If not, what we have will be taken away. So, let us focus on the gospel about kingdom of heaven. Do not be focused only on healing, only on blessing of money. I think we can pray, we still can pray. We still hope Jesus will bless us. But this shouldn't be our main aim. Remember, when we don't have, don't follow the aim and go, we will lose our focus until the end. We do everything. We are wasting our time. So may the Lord bless you. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for the reminder from the parable of sowing the seed. Help us 
to be multiplied and focus on the seed of kingdom of heaven. We pray more multiplication of crop will come up 100 times, 60 times and 30 times. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.
เธอ